I also have to say that the contrast couldn't be clearer. Donald Trump claimed to be incapacitated by bone spurs so that he would not have to serve and let somebody go to war in his place. And that spirit continued through his presidency. We saw it in the uh, report that he referred to those who gave their lives for this country as suckers and losers. By the way, a report that did not originate from some Democratic opposition research machine. It originated from his own chief of staff. Uh, somebody who couldn't be bothered to attend a ceremony at Normandy because it was raining. Uh, and maybe more importantly, because we can talk about the past, but every election is about the future, somebody who's proposed tax cuts for the rich and whose so-called Project 2025 agenda, if you take five minutes reading through that online, clearly entails cuts to care for veterans. And I just think about that compared to last night, where uh, not a lot gets in the way of uh, bath time being on schedule in our, our household. We got toddlers. But we deferred bath time. They watched Frog and Toad. And Chaston and I watched, um, uh, uh, watched the, the, the press conference as the President of the United States reminded the country how much our alliances matter, uh, what it takes to actually secure this country. Uh, and explain that in terms of everything from military relationships to industrial policy. Uh, that's the kind of leader that we want and need uh, for our military, for our national security, for our military families, and for our veterans. And that's what it's like to have a, a, a presidency and a campaign that takes national uh, security and service seriously. So that's why I'm here. That was Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, one of the best Biden surrogates, and one of the best communicators in our Democratic Party, talking in St. Paul, Minnesota, at a VFW office. He was speaking to veterans and their families, outlining the case in this race against Donald Trump. Speaking, of course, on topics related to veteran affairs in our military, our men and women in uniform, but also talking about one of the most important aspects of this race, and that is character. So it wasn't just about the PACT Act, but it was about the things Donald Trump has said about our service members, not just Donald Trump's actions or really lack of action to serve our military, but his experience in his own life not serving our military. We all remember the bone spurs that Donald Trump had in his youth and his uh, deflection from serving in the military. Now, Pete Buttigieg perfectly outlines that case against Donald Trump, perfectly describes his lack of character, saying Donald Trump just cares about himself. And that's incredibly important, not just because we want a candidate for president. We want a president to be someone who cares about the American people. But especially right now, as the Supreme Court has decided that presidents can be kings and they can act with impunity, they can act with immunity, the office of the president has an opportunity to be tarnished by someone like Donald Trump, a wannabe authoritarian who would just use it and abuse it to serve themselves, to serve their rich friends, to serve their cult loyalists, and to not serve the country. And so that's why it's so incredibly important that we elect someone with character like Joe Biden who wants to preserve and protect the office rather than attack it. Now, of course, Pete Buttigieg, like I said, one of the best communicators in the Democratic Party, isn't just great about making the case against Donald Trump, but in this next clip that I'm going to show you, is incredible at making the case for Joe Biden. And that's why Pete re uh, is constantly having reoccurring appearances on Fox News, just like this one, making the case for Joe Biden in his booming, booming economy. Let's check it out. Economy rebounded from COVID. Let me be clear, unemployment is lower than it was even before COVID. Stock market is higher than it was even before COVID. And job creation is faster than it was even before COVID. So matter, no matter what rebound effects you're talking about, these are economic results that have not happened since before I was born. Now, in terms of cost, that's been a major issue. And by the way, that's been a major issue in every wealth, wealthy country. This, this is an example of something that was largely affected by COVID. But I think there's a reason 
why inflation in the U.S. is lower than it is in any of the other G7 countries. It's actually countries. not true. And, uh, yes, At least, it is. Well, not according to the Washington Post. They say Japan, Italy, and Germany all had lower inflation rates than we do, and Italy's is less than 1%. They may have been looking at a different time period, but I'm telling you, if you look at the, the overall time period when it was toughest, our inflation rate was better. And I would add, right now, wages are going up faster than prices. That means even after inflation, you're coming out ahead. Now, that's an across-the-board number, that wasn't but some true. people... For course, two years, that yeah, wasn't true. We had, true. We had, so we had a are, tough bout of inflation, no doubt that we did, which is why back. President Biden is trying to lower costs. Now, look, congressional Republicans were against President Biden when he worked to cut insulin down to $35 a month for seniors. Right now, right now, especially for families that are pressed on costs, we could have insulin capped at $35 a month for everybody, not just for seniors. All it would take is for a few congressional Republicans to walk away from agreeing with Big Pharma and start agreeing with President Biden. That's not the only cost he's out to, uh, to cut. He was uh, in the House in, in that State of the Union speech calling for an across-the-board $2,000 out-of-pocket cap, something else that would help in a country where people are feeling the pinch of those prices that went up with post-COVID inflation. Uh, congressional Republicans are standing in the way of it, but he's going to keep pushing. He's trying to get rid of junk fees, uh, taking on credit card companies, uh, because we know that those are something that affects the cost of living. And look, uh, something else that comes into play alongside the cost of housing is the cost of transportation, which is why, after years and years of talk and years and years of failure, President Biden successfully began to implement the infrastructure bill that is now creating jobs, boosting income, and lowering the cost of our supply chains in every Every part of the country. Record lows for unemployment, record highs for the stock market, record highs for job creation. That's what the Joe Biden economy is about. And again, going back to the point about character and who you serve and who you care about, it's not tax cuts for Joe Biden's rich friends. No, Joe Biden is not that type of president like Donald Trump. It's tax cuts for ordinary Americans. It's policies that are serving and helping to build the middle class. That's where Joe Biden's economic message is directed. That's why that's where Joe Biden's economic action is directed. And it will continue to be if he wins a second term. These are the things that Joe Biden cares about. These are the things that we care about as Democrats, investing in infrastructure, investing in climate prevention, climate change prevention. And that's a clip that I'm actually about to show you. Pete Buttigieg making that argument, but these are the historic investments in lowering prescription drug prices that we have seen that create jobs that save money for working class Americans and build up our economy in a real way. Now, I mentioned fighting climate change and the job that Joe Biden has done that making the largest investment, a historic investment in climate infrastructure. Joe Biden's administration has done that and Pete Buttigieg has perfectly argued for why we should continue to do so. And just last week, he was live fact-checking, in real time, fact-checking a MAGA Republican who was lying about the climate crisis, and Joe Biden's policy on electric vehicles. And it, it's just a incredible watch. So let's check it out. And this dictatorial policy. Well, thank you. Uh, given time is limited, I will confine myself to addressing the factually incorrect portions of what you have said, beginning with the assertion that EV sales are going down. They are, in fact, going up. Does that include every the government sales year, or, or private sales? Every single year, private sales more or Americans sales, have purchased Mr. Secretary. EVs. The entire market. Uh, overall, the government's forced to buy them, so sales are going up, but the private sector. There are private is sales, not. too. Yeah. I'd like those numbers. Sure. Uh, 1.2 million EVs were sold in the U.S. in 2020. How, how, many, how many government and how many private? We'll get you that breakout. But as you know, more private citizens buy EVs than uh, government purchases. No, I, do, I don't. Let me uh, don't address the second true. factual mistake in okay. your remarks, which was that EV costs are, are getting higher. They're, in fact, getting lower. And according to J.D. Power, have now reached parity or are slightly lower than With the or without subsidy, Mr. Secretary. With uh, or that without does, subsidy. Yeah, that does include the subsidy. That's right. Uh, but the point is they are going lower. Th but they're not because we're all your buying Your statement them. that they we're are going up is them. incorrect. The third incorrect assertion you made is that uh, sales dropped in Q1. They did not drop compared to Q1 of the previous year. Of course, if you compare them to Q4, they drop, because they always do, because car sales are seasonal. But I, I would imagine most people are aware of that. And no, fourth, I'm talking about I want to address the EV, Q4 to Q1. EV, they, not just overall car sales. Any car sales go down Q1 to Q4, because more people buy cars in Q4. But what I'm telling you is every single year, more Americans buy EVs than the year before. And the word tailspin is just a bizarre word to use for a growing 
sector of our economy. We also think that since that's the way that the market is headed, we should not allow China to build on the advantage that they developed during the Trump administration, not because they're environmentalists, but the, because they understand the economic power of trying to dominate the EV market. We want those EVs to be made in America, and increasingly they are. I'm happy to have them made in America, Mr. Secretary. What I'm not happy about is the mandate. America, the American people should be able to buy any vehicle that they want. That brings me to the fourth and final thing that, that uh, I need to uh, challenge as being factually inaccurate, which there is there is no mandate. You can purchase a gas car if you want to pay. Who else? Just show of hands. Actually, drop it in the comments. Cannot get enough of Pete Buttigieg. Just absolutely incredible as a communicator, as a advocate, as a spokesperson for these Biden policies, these Biden achievements in shutting down the MAGA narrative. That's why he is so incredible on Fox News. That's why he is so incredible fact-checking Republicans, because not only does he he know he knows the issues, but he, he interacts with them. He cares about them. They mean something to him. And that's why, in all honesty, it's pretty easy to fact-check MAGA because they don't really care. They're disingenuous. It's clear, and we know it. And that's why we have to fight back. Now, if you are a fan of Pete Buttigieg and you like this video, make sure to uh, like this video, smash that like button. Make sure you drop a comment, a blue heart in the comments telling me you like this video. And you can go ahead and subscribe. Subscribe to my channel. It'll either be here or right there. And subscribe to Really American to support this movement and what we are building. Or you can go to the link in the description and click that uh, click that link in and subscribe to my channel. But uh Again, Pete Buttigieg, what a rock star. We need more of Pete. And of course, thank you for sticking around. I will see you next time. <laughs>